Question four, do colleges offer in-state and out-of-state students the same scholarship opportunities? And is there any way to get a scholarship for an out-of-state college? Um, this is from at um, Kayla CV. I'm really sorry if I butchered that. Um, really great last name, so I apologize. Um, but so for me, like I said um, earlier, I was recruited out of state for field hockey. So that was kind of my scholarship opportunity. Um, I did, you know, when I was in the scholarship search and like being recruited, I did kind of map out um, a few different areas where I was okay with looking for school. Um, originally, I thought Massachusetts was way too far for me. Mm -hmm. uh, five hours, I was like, I can't do that. Like, my family's in New Jersey. Like, how am I gonna make this work? And it ended up being like a really great fit for me. Um, so I'm really, I really lucked out with that. Um, so for me, you know, out of state tuition for Massachusetts was not incredibly bad. I did get a scholarship, so it brought that down. Um, but I was very conscious through this whole process of, okay, it's going to be this amount. Like if I get this percentage, like what would it be? Like how, what else can I do to kind of help that? Um, so I think a lot of universities, especially UMass Lowell, they, they take pride in getting people out of um, Massachusetts to come to their school. They're all about like having diversity, different backgrounds, um, people with different experiences, um, you know, to just kind of create one whole, um, student body and so for me it they I think reached out and it ended up working out well um, but I do know my brother he went to UNH and he was offered some scholarships for there and he was also a civil engineer so he got money for that and um, I think he tried to hone in on being out of state and kind of bringing his um, passion to New Hampshire so there's definitely a lot of opportunities for in-state, out-of-state, universities, small colleges, public schools, private schools. Um, and uh, on College Express, they map all of that out. You know, if you ever need any guidance on what you're looking for, if you want to go out of state and you want to go to a smaller private school, um, there's opportunities for you right at your fingertips to kind of dive in and, and look into that and see if it can relate to you and if you want to move forward with that. So definitely use your resources for that. And now you're a Bostonian. <laughs> yep. Uh, I switched my license and my license plates last month. It's Ooh. officially official. Uh, which is insane. And a Pats fan? Mm, well, it's not <laughs> <laughs> that far yet. Um, so do they offer um, in-state and out-state students the same scholarship opportunities? Not usually. But there are a lot that are specific to out-of-state students because, like Katie said, a lot of schools want to bring students from out of state. There are also reciprocity reciprocity programs um, that you can look into across different states. So for a lot of them, they have limitations, but it will severely cut down the amount of scholarship that you owe. So there are several, um, I want to say out in the Midwest and um, the Southwest or somewhere like, or the Southeast, but there are several of them where like the maximum out-of-state students can pay in the region is 1.5 times the in-state tuition. Um, and there are also some schools, I think Massachusetts has one, uh, where if a major is not offered at the school at a school in your state, that if there are majors in like the other places in New England that do offer that other college state colleges in the area that offer those, uh, you can go for the same uh, price as in-state tuition. Um, so there are a lot of those programs you look into if you want to go someplace like nearby. So like if you're in Florida and you want to go to a college in Georgia, that's a state school, check into what reciprocity programs um, mm -hmm. are around for that because that can significantly cut, cut down your out of state tuition um, and things like that. Um, without you even having to do much effort, you mainly you just have to call and be like, hey, this is a thing. Are you going to honor it? And they're like, yeah, totally. We'll do that. Um, so look into things like that. and. Um, do, they're, like Katie said, there's just, oh, they want to bring in students from out of state because they want to say, we are just a Massachusetts college. We are a national college, essentially, because look at all the people we have. We're really famous. Look at us. We're the United States. <laughs> yeah, I think just to break it apart, too, on what's the difference between in-state and out-of-state mm -hmm. and what qualifies. Pretty yeah. obvious with in-state and out-of-state, but what qualifies for the tuition yep. is, for the majority of the times, your in-state colleges are going to be public universities. And the reason that the tuition is significantly lower than if you're coming from out of state is because while you're working, while your parents are working in that state, they're paying taxes to that school. So then when you're able to go to that school, they say, okay, you've been paying X amount to our school over the years. Here's 
what you get as yeah. a, a discount, yeah. uh, but you're technically not paying it. Uh, whereas somebody coming from out of state is you're not associated with that state. Yeah. So here's what the actual ticket tag is. Yeah. Uh, and as Katie mentioned before too, on College Express, if you go to any one of our college profiles, if we have the data available, which a significant amount yeah. of the schools are, and that's one of our huge data points, you're gonna see in-state versus out-of-state tuition right on the yeah. college profile page, as well as a list of scholarships that are tied to that school. Not tied directly, but you can apply for those scholarships to get money mm -hmm. for that school. So it's not like Champlain sponsoring a scholarship, yeah. but it's, hey, if you apply for the scholarship and you win, you can put it towards Champlain. Yeah. So that kind of loops all the way back to the first question and yeah. applying for scholarships and getting money. Uh, you can do that easily and see and compare what what is. And also happening. check on the school's website. Yep. Yeah. They have mm -hmm. their scholarships on there too, especially for out of state. Mm -hmm. Just search that on there. Be easy to find. If you're like me and you uh, don't know what you want to major in, but you definitely want to leave the state, you can Google search um, affordable out of state schools. <laughs> There's actually also an article in College Express about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that'll list some of the colleges around the country that have more um, are a more reasonable price. Yeah. Um, so you can look those up if you're just looking to get out of your state. Yeah. <laughs> like I was. I honestly would go anywhere. <laughs> just wanted a change. Yeah. Um. I think, and just to also put a little bit of a caveat too for the in-state. Yeah. Uh, you have to prove that you're in-state, and yeah. you can't just put down a street address and be like, hey, <laughs> yeah. I'm in-state. You have to actually provide proof. So uh, having like a driver's license, or if it's your passport, which yep. is, uh, but you do need uh, proof of identification yeah. that you're from that state to get the benefits of in-state tuition, even if it's a pay stub from uh, yeah. the state that you're working in. But uh, That's a really good point, sure. and a lot of schools will have um, limits. Not limitations. Yeah, limitations on how long you have to be living in the state. So, like, mm -hmm. if you just move to Rhode Island and you're like, well, I want to get Rhode Island state, you know, tuition, um, they might be like six months or a year or mm -hmm. sometimes even you longer. Have to, like, live there. You have to, that you have to live there for um, that before they'll they'll eat. Um, you can't just be like, I live in Rhode Island now. I moved here last month. Give me in state tuition because everyone moves to Rhode Island if they're going to college in Rhode right. Island. It's, I mean, that's, that's how you get there. I actually had a friend do that. Yeah. Um, he went to Clemson, South Carolina, and he, what did he do? He had like this internship. Mm -hmm. So he took a semester off to work there. Maybe it was a co-op type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and he ended up living there for about, I think that was his sophomore year. So once he got into his junior year, he was, he, because he was working in the state yeah. now getting paid, he actually applied to become a citizen of South Carolina yeah. and did the whole thing. And, um, so I think his senior year, he was able to apply a discount to yeah. his tuition, and it ended up working out really well for him, which I didn't even know you could do. Yeah, so you can probably do that if you like, if freshman year you're going to go to a state school and you like get there and you say, I like this state, I'm going to live here, um, and you probably like get an apartment, you get a job, yeah. you change over your license and your registration and all that, you prove that you're dedicated to being um, a citizen in that state. I don't want to say citizen though because it sounds like you're going to different countries. <laughs> if you're like a resident, <laughs> that's, if that's you're a resident of the state, I'm like, citizen. Ah, it's like this feels very. Like, yeah, we're all the same that. country. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the first president? Who's the governor? Um, yeah, that's that's a question they should ask you. Who's the governor of the state? <laughs> a lot of people who live there probably wouldn't know. Yeah. I don't think that. I don't um, think I know. No, I don't think I know. Massachusetts. I'm still new. I'm still new. You are still new. We'll give you that. Um, you're out of here. I didn't know the governor of Vermont was my whole time there. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, but no, yeah, so, my family yeah. actually looked into it because we have a house in Hampton, and so we pay taxes every year. Yeah. So we thought maybe um, we could get in-state tuition for UNH since we have a house there, and they actually wouldn't give it to us because. Um, there wasn't someone living there year round. They were very specific about it. So you can't just, even if you pay for the house and you pay taxes, mm -hmm. you have to. That's great, especially for, for New Hampshire because everything is property tax. Yeah. Oh, it's everything is property not tax. Getting taxed on your work. You know what I mean? You're getting taxed on yeah. the house, but not on. But like all well, the, the money goes from the property tax. Yeah, taxes sure. we pay for yeah. New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, the parents are not there. happy. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's insane. Yeah. 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 So, uh, she doesn't tax for like they have very low income taxes they don't do sales tax yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. but they their property taxes are huge ever 
Yeah, so I get double, um, I don't know what a nice term for this is, but I get doubly <laughs> slashed, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where um, I pay the work tax in Massachusetts yep. for working here, and then I go home and I have to pay the property tax. But uh, it's like a interesting trade-off. Yeah. I know we're not talking about college and we're talking about property tax. <laughs> uh, it fits. It, it, yeah. It's adult It's all together. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess, I don't know, just to like add another comment about in-state, out-of-state, um, I think it's important for you to kind of figure out too before you do the scholarship search um, if you want to be in-state or out-of-state. I know um, a lot of my friends stayed in-state and it was kind of hard for me to leave them and I kind of had like FOMO my freshman year because they all went to Rutgers and um, they all saw each other and I, you know, it would be hard to make a weekend trip, you know, to and from school and um, I think I kind of took myself outside of my comfort zone by moving five hours north. And I really truly believe like it was one of the best decisions for me because I kind of, you know, found who I am, what I want to study, what my passions are. And I kind of like, you know, made new friends and I really got involved in the Lowell community. And it's it just, for me, it was a really nice kind of breath of fresh air. Like you said, getting out of Massachusetts for you, getting out of New Jersey for me, I kind of, wanted to dive deeper into like a new part of the country and kind of just explore things. And for me, that worked out really well. And I know I have some friends who stayed in New Jersey. They're very family oriented. They loved it. They are so happy, you know, home on the weekends, home cooked meal, laundry done by your mom, like freshly made bed, like all of the nice stuff that, you know, being at home um, provides you. So it kind of just comes down to, do you want to pursue going somewhere else, you know, kind of exploring a new area or would you rather stay in state, you know? Great, get a great education and still be able to have time for family and friends. And then once you can kind of figure that out, choose a path and then start, you know, digging deeper into like schools, scholarship opportunities, you know, possible um, like things around the school. Like we have Boston near us. We can go to New Hampshire. There's a lot to do in the area. So that was also a nice shopping. benefit. Yeah. 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 Um, kind of going off that with the in-state versus out-of-state thing, uh, think of also the other cost of just like certain um, scholarships apply just to tuition uh, when it comes to in-state or out-of-state. So if you're going to like an in-state school, going back to Massachusetts, the John and Abigail Scholarship, that gives you free tuition, which is $15,000. It still costs $30,000 total to attend a Mass State school if you're in-state. So you're getting half off technically, but you still have to pay for room and board and taxes and fees um, that go along with your education. So if you're like staying in state and you can get an in-state scholarship that applies like just to tuition, think about the other costs for it. Like, are you, are you family oriented? Are you going to stay at home during the time? Cause that will cut down your costs more. Um, or even if you're going out of state, if I were like, if I were going to UNH, I would probably stay at home. Um, because it's only, it's a couple, you know, it's an hour drive from, um, where I live, but like it's only an hour and I could save $10,000 right. a year, um, doing that. So consider those options as well. So even if it's not necessarily a scholarship, if you live near the border to another <laughs> state um, where there's this college right there, you know, maybe consider that as an option. Like it's not a real scholarship, but you are saving money. It's true. 